I sometimes like to sell the things that I make, and this bench is a good example of that. I put this one up for $80, which is pretty low for something handmade. To my surprise, someone offered me $35. So today, I'm going to show you two things. How to build this bench, but also how expensive it can be to build it, especially if you don't have the tools. For demonstration purposes, we're going to have three different sections. The cost of the item, the cost of the project, and the overall cost, including some of the tools. And here's our first example. We can also factor in the cost of the miter saw and the saw blade. People are sometimes quick to account for the cost of the materials, but they rarely account for the cost of the tools that are needed for these projects. I understand that each of these tools can be used for more than one project, but for someone who doesn't have the tools, paying a small premium shouldn't be the end of the world. Anyway, this bench is going to be 40 inches in length. This means that we have to cut two boards to that size, since we're going to join these two boards and they're going to make up the top of the bench. Shortly after that, I started measuring out the bench legs. And for these, you're going to need to cut four boards and make sure that each one is 16 and a half inches long. With the added thickness of the two boards that make up the top, this bench should sit about 18 inches tall. I usually just measure one board perfectly and then line all my other boards up using that first board as a reference. To do this, you can just stack your two boards up, make sure they're lined up on the opposite end, and then line the shorter board up with the saw blade before you start cutting. This will put you in a position to remove any of the excess. This is just a little preview, but after you've made all your cuts, you should have something like this. Also make sure to dispose of your scraps, put your stuff away, and then vacuum when you need to, because it'll save you time in the long run. Now that that's done, we can comfortably get back to joining the boards. I'm joining each of the boards with dowels, and I'm using a Milescraft doweling jig in order to make that possible. This jig will allow you to drill a perfectly centered hole, which is where the dowel is going to sit. Then you'll need to put your tool on the dowel and lock in the thickness of the wood using the little red accessory. After that, you can clamp together your two mating boards, and this will allow you to use your tool to drill each corresponding dowel hole. Remember how we measured the thickness of the wood a moment ago? This is exactly what that helps with. If everything was done right, your board should line up perfectly. After the legs were done, I gave the same treatment to the top of the bench. This was the same process, but with more dowels for added support. And speaking of support, one way that you can support me is by liking and subscribing to the channel. I try to do a lot of fun DIY projects, and this will help you get exposed to them in the future. Once my boards were ready, I started adding wood glue because this is where most of the strength comes from. You're going to want to make sure that you put a thin layer of glue between the two boards and also make sure that all the dowels are covered in glue as well. I went with dowels because they're great for strength and alignment. Covering these up with glue will help you make sure that they don't move around. After each board was with its mating piece, I clamped these all together. As you can see, clamps are pretty expensive, so I don't have too many. This means that I had to be efficient when clamping my boards up. I of course put the mating pieces together while also applying some pressure between the top and the legs. And since these didn't have glue between them, I didn't have to worry about them getting stuck. And you remember how we made a few dowel holes on the boards earlier? Well, after the glue dries, you have to do this again on each set of legs. So the piece that has the dowels in it is one of the legs, and the board under that is the top of the bench. After clamping these two pieces together and measuring the depth of the wood one more time, you can use your doweling jig to create the holes. And I hate to sound like a broken record here, but the process for joining these is very similar to what we did before. Use some wood glue and make sure that all your dowels are nicely covered up. And once that's done, you can use a couple of your clamps to secure the leg to the top. You might have to do one leg at a time, depending on how many clamps you have. I let the piece dry overnight, and the next day, I started sanding it. Sanding can be a little tedious, but it's very important if you want to have a nice and smooth finish in the end. Everyone's sanding preferences are different, but lately I've been starting with 100 grit sandpaper, and then 150, and finishing at 180. After sanding, staining is pretty easy and a lot less time consuming. I usually cover the entire project with stain using a normal rag, and then I use a clean rag to wipe it all off. 
and this is a bench, which means it's going to have contact pretty frequently. To give it some protection, I normally use Verithane's water-based polyurethane. I really like this product because it doesn't alter the color of the wood once it dries. Give the project a few coats with ample dry time in between, and you should be all set. I hope this has been a little eye-opening for some people. This wasn't intended as a sign of disrespect, it's more so a sign of perspective. We're going to see the totals in just one second, and when you do, please let me know what you think in the comments. I understand that someone building this might not incur all of these costs, but these are all costs that I incurred in order to be able to make things like this. Some things need to be taken into account, like labor, travel time, or even the electricity needed to power all the tools. I'm hoping that a lot of people will be able to relate to that sentiment. And if you do, feel free to share the video with someone else who will feel the same way. And as always, thanks for watching.